my parents were at a get together and uh, Brother Sayers had brought a young man with him. And he was quite obviously worldly. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses can uh, discern people who are not them by the clothes they wear. <laughs> That's a miracle of Jehovah's Witnesses that they have. They can look at your clothing and size you up. But um, it's not uncommon for uh, Jehovah's Witness to bring an interested person or a Bible study to a congregation get-together. But sometimes the Jehovah's Witnesses there are standoffish, understandably. Because after all, it's a worldly person. Who knows what could go down. Uh, but my parents were there, and of course they were... Uh, tried to be cordial with the young man, but he was kind of a weird guy. Um, I guess my parents tried to talk to him and be friendly, but he was fixated on a single sister. That w I imagine that was the reason he wanted to come to the get-together, because she was there. <laughs> uh, her name was Trudy Noth. And she was a young sister in her 20s. And uh, I guess he had taken a liking to her and had become fixated. And I'm sure this is a scenario that happens in almost every hall. Um, a worldly person will show up and appear to be interested in what's going on, but... What they're more interested in is getting a woman that, again, this was before I was born, so I don't really know, but I've just seen how things go at the Kingdom Hall sometimes, and um, I just know how those scenarios can play out. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I guess you know it's happened in your hall for whatever reason. Someone is studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, but it doesn't pan out because I don't know. But for um, for whatever reason, Brother Sayers was studying with uh, this guy named Mike for a while, but it didn't go anywhere. It fizzled because they were not making progress. But um, Mike was still coming to meetings because he had a fixation with uh, the sister named Trudy. And it was uh, awkward, I guess, because he, uh, you know, she, I guess he tried to talk to her a couple times, but it went badly. <laughs> I guess he was not, uh, he kind of creeped her out. Understandably, he's a worldly guy, he's wearing dirty clothes. Um, he's worldly. What was she going to do, reciprocate? Um, but, uh, and I guess he would stare at her during meetings. And she complained to the brothers about it, but they reminded her that the Kingdom Hall is a public place and we're in the business of inviting people to Kingdom Halls, getting them in there. It's the whole point of what we do. So uh, they told her to, you know, deal with it and make make an exception for him. But uh, the thing is, Trudy worked at, there's a little muffin shop <laughs> at the Wichita airport, and she worked there. And he would come in. And be, it's just like a little gift shop for air travelers. And he would come in and he would buy some little uh, sundry item. For, and he wouldn't say anything. He would just look at her for the, and she felt like it was for the purpose of being in her uh, proximity. Made her uncomfortable. But what was more was that when she would walk to her car after um, her job had ended, Mike would be sitting in his car and he, he, he would sit there and wait for her to leave work so that he could watch her walk to her car. And Trudy went back to the brothers again and this time they did listen and they got him out of there. His 
invitation to the Kingdom Hall was revoked. And, um, but his, uh, you know, obsession with Trudy did not end there. And she said that, um, he was driving by her house in the evenings that she would look out the window and he would be driving by. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. You know, I wasn't there, but, and it's a, it's a public street. Anyone can drive up and down it. You don't own the street, lady. But uh, nevertheless, the brothers decided to post, uh, you know, uh, ministerial servants there in the evenings and at night. They would have one or two brothers that would just, you know, stand outside in the yard and, um, you know, to discourage his car driving by all the time. I guess he got the message. He did not come back to the Kingdom Hall. However, not long after that, he did check into the Holiday Inn Plaza, and he said he wanted a room at the top. And when he got up to his room, he opened the window and took out a rifle and started shooting. And he was like a sniper with a scope, and he was getting people in his crosshairs and taking them out. There, there was actually a patrol car on the scene in less than a minute, but they got pinned down by Mike, and they couldn't even move. It was a terrifying, you know, uh, series of events. There was, there was even a news team that arrived on the scene, and uh, one of the reporters was actually the one who spotted Mike, because they didn't know where the shots were coming from. And the reporter, it was on the 26th floor of the Holiday Inn, and the reporter, you know, was pointing at him, and his cameraman lifted his lens up, and pop! Mike uh, shot the cameraman and blew his eyeball out of his head. And everyone was running for cover, people were crawling, people, because, um... It was, he had a bird's eye view of everyone. No one had a chance against him. But some brave police officers did make their way into the plaza through the parking garage. They uh, snuck in through the north entrance and they got a key to the adjacent room from the hotel staff and they quietly made their way up there. And they snuck into the room And through the window, they could see the barrel of Mike's rifle. And they very carefully slid open the window. And they actually had a very daring plan. One of the policemen took a bed sheet and held it like a tether while the other one grabbed onto it. And he actually fell backwards out of the window like SWAT style, and he just dropped out of the window and opened up his tin gauge on Mike. Boom! Shakalaka! (laughs) And uh, don't worry, Mike survived. He was okay. It just blew off his fingers and half his face. And he's... He's okay. He's still alive to this day in the 8 by 10 cinder block room, which he still resides. And uh, he here's the interesting thing. The building across the street that Mike was shooting at was the Century 2 Convention Center. And that's where Jehovah's Witnesses had held their circuit assemblies. But don't worry, no Jehovah's Witnesses were harmed, Uh, although Mike did manage to gun down 11 people. He was targeting anyone wearing a suit or a dress. Uh, 
80s, my parents were at a get-together, and uh, Brother Sayers had brought a young man with him. And he was quite obviously worldly. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses can uh, discern people who are not them by the clothes they wear. <laughs> it's a miracle of Jehovah's Witnesses. and be friendly, but he was fixated on a single sister that would, I imagine that was the reason he wanted to come to the get-together because she was there. <laughs> uh, her name was Trudy Noth, and she was a young sister, offish, understandably, because after all, it's a worldly person, who knows what could go down. Uh, but my parents were there, and of course, they were uh, tried to be cordial with the young man, but he was kind of a weird guy. Um, I guess my parents tried to talk to us that they have. They can look at your clothing and size you up. But, um, it's not uncommon for uh, Jehovah's Witness to bring an interested person or a Bible study to a congregation get-together, but sometimes the Jehovah's Witnesses there are standard.